This is lesson 9.3 and we're going to get into optimizing distance. So I did want you guys to notice that um, every time I do my solutions, I'm trying to make sure that you see a general pattern, some sort of like a, a skeleton or a backbone of these types of solutions. It should be very, very similar, no matter what you're actually trying to optimize. So even though we were talking about in the first video, 9.1, optimizing area, or in 9.2, optimizing volume, or in this video, distance, like they should have the same kind of steps. So I'm just going to scroll down really quickly and then we're going to do these examples. You should start with some sort of let statements because you're going to have a bunch of variables. Okay, now notice that afterwards I have some sort of minimize or maximize. In the question, obviously, because they're talking about optimization, look at what they're trying to get you to optimize. Like, is it area? Is it volume? Is it distance? Because that's going to dictate what this formula should be. And this is actually the hardest part of um, the question itself is finding this formula because once you have it you can do the derivative the second derivative and so on the constraints are usually pretty important too because they're the restrictions on your variables and sometimes you'll notice that like right here you can't really take the derivative because there's just so many different letters and so the constraints will help you to minimize the number of variables that you'll have Actually, in addition to that, any of the constraints um, could also be used as a check at the very end. Sometimes you think you actually have the maximum or minimum answer and you don't actually have that. You need to check with um, the domain for your variables. Okay, so the solution itself, very standard. You have your equation, but you're simplifying it so that it's in a, a way that's very easy to make the derivative. Okay, so the next step would be once it's nice and simplified, do the derivative and then set it equal to zero and find your critical value. So notice at the bottom, I have my critical value for t. That could be a max or a min. And so you want to do a second derivatives test in order to determine if it is in fact a max or a min. And it should match whatever the question is asking you for. So in this case, we were minimizing distance. So it does match. If it doesn't, I mean like it's some sort of a check that tells you, hey, you might have done something wrong. And at the very end, it's going to look slightly different from question to question because at this point, you're just answering what the question is asking you for. And so um, this would be where you would be finding your information for your conclusions. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. All right, we're going to be optimizing distance and I'm going to be starting at example number six. Okay, it's a continuation of the last couple of videos. So at midnight, that is our starting point. We're going to start at, I don't know, time zero in military time. Okay, so midnight. Ship B, which is down here, was 90 kilometers south of ship A. So here's ship A. And we got our 90 kilometers. Ship A sailed east 15 kilometers per hour. So we have a vector going this way with its velocity. Ship B headed north, which is this vector, 20 kilometers per hour. At what time, that means you must be looking for the answer, T, uh, were they closest? Closest means um, some sort of a maximization or minimization, right? So if you think about closest, like you and another person closest to each other, which be, would be like minimizing the distance between you. So that's what we're actually going to be looking for, a minimization of the distance, which means I need to find a distance formula. So I have a bunch of let statements already, and why don't we just put all those into the diagram? Let x represent the distance ship A travels. So that's probably going to be this. Let y represent the distance B travels, which is over here. Let s represent the distance between them, because that's what we're trying to find the equation of. So the distance between them is going to be something like that. Oh, that's not very straight. Let's try that again. There you go. Okay, so it's a hypotenuse, right? You got your right angle triangle. Okay. Obviously, we're going to be doing some sort of a Pythagorean theorem because your S is going to be like right here. That's the distance that I want to find. 
Um, but in order to find the Pythagorean theorem, like I need to know what this distance is. So that's not y. But since the entire distance between the two purple points is 90, this must be 90 minus y. All right. And again, a is asking for the time. And so we're going to need a let statement for t, which represents the time as soon as midnight starts. OK, so t is any time after midnight. All right. Now, before we get um, go on farther, I do want you to read b so that you know what we're looking for. What is the closest distance for the ships? So first of all, we're going to find what is the time that they're closest and then what is that actual distance? So we want to minimize the distance itself, and that's why we have some sort of Pythagorean theorem going on. So we have our a squared and our b squared, which are in red, x squared and 90 minus y squared. So I'm just matching the colors with what's in my diagram. That's going to be c squared is equal to. So your c is your s, your distance, your hypotenuse. OK, now I just want to simplify it so that s is by itself and you want to isolate s. That means getting rid of this guy. OK, so that's what I have right over here. Square rooting both sides and writing it instead as an exponent. Now I have s by itself, but I can't take the derivative of this yet. You have x's and y's and s's. Way too many letters. And so that's where the constraints come in. So the constraints themselves will help you to eliminate this problem of having too many letters. OK, this guy right here is the distance ship A travels. So remember how we said ship A is going to go x kilometers? Well, that is the velocity times however much time has gone by, OK? Because we have distance is velocity times time. This formula right here is going to be how far ship B travels. Because we had said y represents how many kilometers B is going to go. And B is traveling at 20 kilometers per hour for however many um, hours. Okay, So what I'm thinking is, why don't we just scrap this guy and put this guy instead? Scrap this guy and put this guy instead. Then we'll have a, like a formula, not a solution, sorry, formula or an equation that has s's and only t's. You do have to make sure that you mention also the restrictions on t. And so obviously t can't be negative. There's no such thing as negative hours. Uh, so it can be zero. That would mean midnight exactly, which could happen. I mean, like maybe by midnight, they're already the closest they could ever be. OK, so the smallest number t could be is 0, and then it could be anything bigger than 0. So now we're going to get into the solution. All right, notice that I've already subbed in 15t for my x and 20t for my y. Now what you want to do is before taking the derivative, you're just going to simplify the distance equation. OK, I'm not even going to touch like this square root. On the outside, all I want to do is make this guy look simpler. And so working inside, I get something like this. This looks pretty simple because it's just a long polynomial and it has a power like to the 1 half, which is fine. So we can take the derivative by taking the 1 half, putting it in front, and then subtracting 1. So that's this guy right here. All right, then taking the derivative of the inside, making sure that we do our um, chain rule and simplifying it and making it equal to 0. OK, now if I'm going to solve for t, I can move the denominator to the other side. So all of this to the other side, which will eliminate the entire denominator. So really, all I really want is the numerator itself. Like this part right here is the important part. OK, so that's what we have. We're going to move this guy over to the other side. And we're going to solve by dividing. And that might, means that we have some sort of a critical value at 2.88. That critical value represents the time that we have a maximum or a minimum. I just have no idea if it's a maximum or a minimum, which is why we're going to do the second derivative test. 
taking the second derivative and subbing 2.88 into the second derivative, I get about 11.6, which is greater than zero. That means it must be a concave up. So a concave up is this shape, which gives you a minimum, and that minimum happens at this time. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? A minimum distance, and that happens at 2.88 hours. So we answered our first question, which was, what time are they closest? They're actually closest at 2.88 hours. But what the heck does that mean? Like 2.88 hours? Like, that's not a time. So the 2 represents 2 o'clock, like 2 a.m. Okay, and I know that it's a.m. and not p.m. Because p.m. would be, if you're using military time, I think that's 14. It would be 14.88. Okay, so it would be past 12 o'clock. So just the 2 represents 2 in the morning. Now this guy right here, the 0 0.88, you're going to have to multiply by 60 minutes in order to figure out how many minutes it is. So that's where the 53 comes from. So it's about 2 and sorry, 2.53 in the morning when the ships are actually closest to each other. And B was asking, well, what is that distance? So just take the time and sub it back into your distance formula, which is S, and you'll get the actual distance. So around 2.53 in the morning, you're going to, well, both of those ships are going to be 54 kilometers apart. And that is the closest distance they're going to be, then they're going to kind of pass each other and get even farther. Okay, let's tackle another one. This one's a funny one. Okay, so example number seven, a moose problem. I don't know where these names came from. They're very interesting to me, and so I'm hoping I'm not butchering them. But Sarlov, so here's Sarlov, Sarkirt, Sarkirt, and Sarimal, which is right here. Um, all of them are actually going to start not where you see them, but they're going to start right here at the bottom. Okay, now. They see Seema. Seema is the one in the tutu. Okay. And uh, obviously they want to be with her, right? So Sarlov jumps in the water and swims directly to Seema. So here's Sarlov. I'm going to jump and swim directly across the river to Seema. Sarkirt, knowing that he can run faster than he swims, he runs straight for a bit and then he's going to go up. Okay, so he actually runs straight a um, hundred meters and then swims 25 meters to Sima. Now Sarmiel, who's also starting wherever they started from, he's a little bit older and he's kind of wise. He's also an astute calculus student. So he's going to calculate the best route that will minimize his time because obviously the first one that gets to Sima is the one that she's going to choose. So he's thinking, hmm, Perhaps there's like a certain distance over here that optimizes my time where I can run a certain distance. Maybe I don't have to run all the way, but then I'll start swimming across and maybe that'll save some time. So he, he's a pretty smart moose. All right. Now, all of them actually run at um, the same speed and swim at the same speed. Now, because the 100 meters is in meters and so is a 25. I'm just going to change this uh, to 15,000 meters per hour. And I'm going to change this one to 5,000. Oh, I almost put kilometers. Meters per hour. Okay, so let's start off with the very first one. We'll start off with Sarlov. Okay, so this guy is Sarlov right here. All right, and this is how he actually moves. So technically it was supposed to be 100 meters across that you could have run, and then you could have gone up 25 meters to get to SEMA, but he decided he's just going to start from here and swim directly across. So I want to know, um, how much time did that take? Now, this is a right angle triangle, and you can see that both sides are distances. So if we find this distance, we can then convert it into a time, because we know how fast he swam, right? So doing the Pythagorean theorem, we get this answer right here, 103-ish meters, uh, divided by his swim speed, 
and then converting it into seconds, it then looks like, okay, he took about 74.22 seconds just to get across the river to get to SEMA. So that is Sarlov's time. Let's take a look at Sarkirt. Okay, so we're going to look at Sarkirt next. So this was the moose who decided to run for a bit and then swim. So he's going to run 100 meters, then he's going to swim 25 meters. Okay, so let's calculate the run time. You take the 100 meters, which is the distance, divide it over the um, velocity, okay, or the speed, I guess, and convert it also into seconds. So his run time, like it took him 24 seconds just to run the 100 meters. And you do the same thing, dividing the distance of the swim by the speed of the swim, converting it into seconds. So this guy right here is going to be his swim time. So adding those both together gives you a total time of 42 seconds. So Sarkirt is 42 seconds. And what was, what was Sarlov? 74. Oh, poor Sarlov. 74. Not good enough, buddy. Okay. But let's see about Cerimal. This is where it gets a little bit serious, so I'm going to start using some let statements. Let's take a look at what this looks like one last time. Okay, so we have, that's supposed to be the 100 meters, correct? 100 meters. This is going to be my 25 meters, all right? Now, Cerimal is like, okay, I don't have to run all the way. Maybe I'm just going to run a part of the way. I'm going to call this R, the distance that he runs. The rest of the way, we'll just call it 100 minus R. So far, so good. OK, now his swim time might be something like, OK, maybe he ran R and then from R, he's just going to swim right away. So this is going to be his swim distance. All right. Now that we have some sort of, I mean, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a right angle triangle. Right there. OK, I can do a Pythagorean theorem. And I think you're starting to notice that like a lot of these distance type of questions require some sort of uh, Pythagorean theorem where you have this guy squared is equal to this guy squared plus this guy squared. So that's the formula for that one right there. And I've simplified it and solved for s. Okay. Now we know that we want to minimize the time because obviously, you know, Sarmiol, he's like, okay, I got to get to Seema's fast as possible. I got to get there faster than the other two moose, meese, moose, geese is geese, moose is meese. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, when we take our um, distance and divide it by the time, or sorry, the uh, velocity or speed that we're going to need in order to figure out our run time. We're going to take the same with our distance for our swim divided by our speed or velocity um, of the swim. We're then going to get our total amount of time if we add them together. So again, too many variables to take the derivative of. So I know that this is the formula that I want to take the derivative of, but you have t's, r's, and s's. Or do you? So you're using your constraint, your other, your other formula, in order to sub in and make sure that you have all R's. So going, oh, no, sorry. Going back down. That's not the right thing. I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. OK, at the bottom, the constraints. So we're going to have to talk about the constraints a little bit, the restrictions. Your run is probably at the very smallest is zero. So I think you can actually say it could also equal to zero. It just has to be bigger than zero. But the maximum it could be is the 100. So it could potentially equal to 100. I think the reason why my coworker probably left them out is because if you actually did equal to zero, that would be the moose that didn't run at all and just swam right across. Whereas the one um, restriction that says, um, is less than or equal to 100, if you ran all 100 and then swam across, that would be the other moose. So I think the reason why she left out the um, 
equal to sign is to see if there was a minimum time for any sort of distance between 0 and 100, but not including 0 or 100, because those were the other two cases with the other two moose. All right, so let's figure out our time equation. So again, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to sub in that Pythagorean theorem equation, and we're going to simplify. So now that it's in a fairly nice um, equation, we can then like figure out the derivative, set it equal to 0, and start solving. So I actually got, I'm not going to go through all this with you, um, but I actually got a run distance of 91.16. Now I got to test to make sure that we do get some sort of minimum using that run distance. So subbing it into our second derivative for our second derivative test gives us a positive number, albeit very, very small. Um, it's greater than zero, which is a concave up, gives you a minimum. So there is a minimum when we have a run uh, distance of 91.16. Okay, so let's figure out how he compares to the other two moose. To find the swim distance, so essentially what he's doing is he's going to run this distance about 91.16, then he's going to start swimming. So I need to know what that swim distance is. And there was that formula, the Pythagorean theorem formula. So subbing in the 91.16, I get a swim distance of 26.52. Now those two together have their own um, speeds and veloc velocities. Ah, oh, it's been such a long time since vectors. Distance divided by velocity of the run. Distance divided by velocity of the swim. Added together and you get 40.97 when you convert it back into seconds. Ah, oh, poor Sarlov and poor Sarkirt. They didn't win the race. Yeah, love is cruel. Go Sarimul. Sarimul. That's a pretty cool name. Sarimul. See? Pays to no calculus. Yet, girlfriends. <laughs> okay, the very last one. Ian and Ada are both training for a marathon. Ian's house is located 20 kilometers north of Ada's house. Okay, let's draw a picture. So here we have Ada's house, and Ian's house is 20 kilometers north. All right, at 9 a.m., so it looks like that's going to be our start time, um, Ian is going to leave his house and start jogging south, and he jogs at this speed. Okay, um, at the same time, Ada leaves her house, jogs east, at this speed. When are Ian and Ada closest together? Okay, so it looks like some sort of a Pythagorean theorem question again, where we have something like something like that. All right, this is going to be our S for our distance. So let S represent the distance from Ian to Ada. Uh, I think we also have, let's see, the distance that's going to be here, and maybe I should use a couple more letters. We'll call that B and we'll call this C. Okay, so let's just take a look at I to C right now. This distance is going to be called 8T. The reason for that is distance is your velocity times your time. So the velocity that Ian is going is 8 multiplied by however much time has gone by. So I have that right here as a distance from I to C. Now if you're going to go from C to A, the entire distance was 20. And so if we take 20, but we subtract the 8T, then we get the distance from C to A. Okay, now we also need A to B, which is going to be Ada's um, velocity, which is 6, and then multiply the time, the amount of time that she's ran for. So you now have everything you need in order to do the Pythagorean theorem right there. Okay, and it says, when are they closest together? Okay, so we're minimizing distance. All right, so we have our Pythagorean theorem. We have a limit as to the time. Um, they had said in the question, sorry, I scrolled down too fast. I always jump the gun right there. 
So they gave us a time limit of about two and a half hours. So within zero to two and a half hours, where are they actually closest? What time does that happen? Okay, that's why we're actually going to have um, our constraints of time between 0 and 2.5. And then we're going to start doing the distance. So uh, these guys I can't take the derivatives of yet. So let's sub in the 20 minus 8t and the 6t that we had before when we were identifying each of the sides in order to do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so to get rid of this guy, I'm going to square root everything. All right, but now I have everything in terms of t, which is great. Putting everything into a root, I can then probably write this as something like this, 100 t squared minus 3. 120 t plus 400 to the power of 1 half before I take the derivative. So are you guys starting to notice like a pattern now? Again, always find your equation, set the derivative equal to 0. So you're going to have to find the derivative, make it equal to 0 solve with the numerator because the denominator disappears when you move it to the other side and then you get your critical value. So your critical value is where a max or min happens and so at 1.6 hours they're going to reach some sort of a minimum but we have to test it. So we test it in our second derivative I get some sort of a positive number which means it's greater than zero concave up and there we go we get our minimum right at 1.6 hours. Okay, so here's something that you might have seen before uh, that I checked my domain. The reason why I do that is it's a safety. Sometimes in questions, like all we had to do was really figure this out. We just sub in our 1.6 time to figure out what the distance was, which was 12 kilometers. Um, the problem is sometimes in the textbook, they'll have some questions where the domains, like the ends of the domains where you find your constraints or your restrictions, sometimes those end up to be like an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum. So they end up to be something that's smaller than 12 kilometers and you actually didn't get the right answer. So we do want to add in that check and I know I should have done it before but we usually do that only if it could equal 0 or 2.5. In cases where it only um, it's um, t can be greater than zero but not equal to zero, like you know how we had our time as square bracket zero to two point five. If we had it with round brackets, there's really no point in even trying to test zero and two point five because they wouldn't equal those anyway. So again. The reason why we're doing this check is because sometimes the textbook is mean and decides to use with one of the sides of the domain as the minimum distance instead. So just want to do like a quick check. So 20, 12, 15, this one is still the minimum distance. So we're going to say the minimum distance between them is 12 kilometers. This happens at 1.6 hours, which the 0 0.6 right here is going to multiply 60 minutes. And that happens at 1 hour and 36 minutes after they started. And I think they started, it said at 9 a.m., right? So 1 hour and 36 minutes after 9 a.m. is going to be 10.36 a.m. Okay, so we have one last video to go. And then party.